Hello, everyone. Heather Holmes here with KTV Fox 2 News in the San Francisco Bay Area. And joining me this afternoon to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic once again is Dr. Rashid Chitani. He is IEM medical officer and an infectious disease specialist. Doctor, thank you once again for being here. It's my pleasure to be with you to talk about this very important and critical issue that the nation is facing right now. And, and doctor, here we are. We are setting just about every day sobering milestones in regards to the pandemic. Let's talk about where we are with cases and unfortunately deaths. Well, globally, we've had 60, we have 65 million cases and uh, uh, 15 mil, which is 15 million more than what we saw two weeks ago. So you can imagine how quickly the disease is spreading. Uh, we have 1.5 million deaths globally, which is 200,000 more than what we saw two weeks ago. So you're seeing the numbers go up across the world. In the United States, we have 14.4 million cases. In Texas, California, and Florida, we have over 1 million cases. Uh, you know, the cases seem to be flattening in the last 14 days. We've just seen 1% increase, but let's not forget about Thanksgiving and, and, and you know, the, the numbers that might increase that we'll see in about one week. So we've got to be very careful and cautious. You know, and, and you know, over the past uh, uh, one week, we've seen over 160,000 cases per day. And, and that is a huge number. You know, our deaths, uh, again, terrible to report, but 280,000 thousand deaths, uh, which is a 30% increase from two weeks ago. And we've not really seen the surge that we might see with uh, Thanksgiving uh, and then the deaths that follow two weeks later. So this is extremely, extremely worrisome. And uh, in a cases are spiking all across the United States, uh, leading to you know dire warnings uh, about full hospitals, uh, exhausted healthcare workers, not enough intensive care units, and you know, and expanding the lockdown, and you know, it's it's psychologically, physically, in all ways, economically, so difficult for people and uh, every single person in the nation. Yeah, and, and people sort of look at these lockdowns and might question whether they are effective. But we have seen things improve, even in, in just the short term, when when these measures are implemented. Absolutely, you know, lockdowns do help. And, uh, you know, what they do is they stop the spread of the disease, right? Uh, if the disease, if you can stop the chain, basically what that does is, is that, you know, it saves a lot of people. And, you know, we've had massive numbers of people who have traveled, you know, on the Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, we were tired, a lot of people, the nation was tired and a lot of people just didn't uh, follow the guidelines and the warnings and they just went about their way. And, you know, to be honest about it, the next three months are going to be the most difficult for our nation. And if we look at uh, 1918, when we had uh, the pandemic, uh, uh, the influenza pandemic, you know, we lost over 700,000 people in that pandemic. You know, we are 100 years from that and, you know, we are still losing people and, you know, God knows what the count is going to be if we do not, uh, you know, observe the, you know, basic guidelines. And I believe uh, that uh, some lockdowns are essential at this point. I want to talk with you about uh, the vaccines because we are getting more and more good news on that front. Uh, give us an update on where things stand right now. So, uh, uh, Moderna, uh, uh, sorry, Pfizer already filed for the uh, FDA approval, uh, emergency authorization use. And uh, on the 10th of December, uh, the committee is going to sit and decide whether they are going to approve that. And the chances are that, yes, it will be approved. Uh, Moderna is all, you know, is, has filed for, uh, filed its application. And uh, December 15th, uh, probably, uh, the FDA is going to review all the data and provide uh, uh, emergency authorization use to, to these two vaccines. Uh, these are both uh, mRNA vaccines, and uh, they've shown to, you know, over 90-95 percent uh, effectiveness, and uh, the safety data is there. So uh, yes, we will have vaccines uh, very, very, very soon, uh, but you know, it's going to be in a limited quantity, right? So we are expecting that uh, in December, uh, with uh, Moderna and Pfizer being uh, approved, we will have approximately 40 million uh, doses. That means 20 million people because every individual re will require two shots. In January, we'll have 50 million doses, 
That means 25 more million people can be vaccinated. February and March, we'll have about 60 million doses, which means that about 30 more million can be vaccinated. So by February and March, we are expecting if no other vaccine is approved before that, uh, and, and, and the production line is what I just, you know, the numbers that I gave you is that, that 75 million Americans can be vaccinated. Now, uh, ACIP uh, got to get, ACIP came up with this recommendation that uh, healthcare workers and long-term uh, facility, people who live in long-term facilities should be vaccinated first. And uh, it's a very good plan and they'll come up with uh, other things very soon. Uh, it, we have 21 million 21 million healthcare workers who, who, in, in the US and about close to 3 million people live in long-term care facilities. So 24 million people can be vaccinated very quickly. And you can take an example of, you know, when you are in a plane, uh, you know, you know and, and there's a problem, they tell you that you got to put the oxygen mask on you first and then put the oxygen mask on the child. So providing the vaccination for healthcare workers protects them and, uh, and, and makes sure that they are taking care of anybody that comes to the hospital. Uh, the the, the long-term facility is 3 million, and that's the, a, the, the, that's the group where you have the highest number of deaths, right? 30% of the deaths are in that particular group. So if you vaccinate the 3 million people or three to 4 million people, whatever the number is gonna be, final number, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna decrease the hospitalization as well as the deaths in the country in a big, big statistically significant way. After that, uh, we have uh, about 87 million essential workers and uh, there are 53 million people who are above the age of 65. Now for them, uh, yes, slowly the vaccine will be available and uh, you know, we'll move forward. We have a very large population in the United States of America. And uh, you know, the, these two vaccines, even though they're accelerating their manufacturing, uh, you know, there is gonna be a limit to that. But we've got other vaccines that are coming. We've got AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine uh, that is expected to finish its, uh, it actually finished the studies uh, or the phase three trials, but there was some error in the data and now they're running some more studies, doing some more studies, and, and, and in the United States, they'll collect the phase, phase three data, and they are expected to file uh, for emergency authorization use, and by March, uh, that vaccine probably is going to be available also. Uh, Janssen, uh, that is Johnson & Johnson vaccine, is, uh, is, is uh, planning to file for emergency authorization use in February of 2021, and then there's another vaccine, Novavax, which is doing its phase three studies right now, and they're expected to file uh, for emergency authorization use in March. All of these five vaccine, vaccines so far have shown excellent data. Uh, so I expect that not just Moderna and Pfizer, but we'll have at least two more other, two more vaccines that are gonna be available quickly. And that is gonna fill the gap that we need to fill in order to vaccinate the population. Yeah, that's important to note for, for people who, who are watching that just because there are those who are going to be first to get approval doesn't mean that research studies and things like that just stop on other vaccine options. Absolutely. And, and Operation Warp Speed and, and the folks that have been running it have done such a tremendous job. You know, I've got to, I've got to salute all the scientists and, and all the other people that are running that operation and, and say that you know, it's just been a tremendous success. You know, it, it is the best that you could have during what we are going through at this point and that we'll have a vaccine, uh, you know, available. And I believe that uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the 15th, I believe, uh, probably 13th or maybe 12th of this day in December, uh, the first person will be vaccinated. The vaccine is already uh, being shipped. Uh, for example, Chicago, uh, uh, received, uh, uh, it, not Chicago, uh, O'Hare Airport, uh, you know, had the shipment of the vaccine, I think, two days ago. So they're all ready uh, to, to make sure that as soon as the FDA approval is granted, uh, you know, they can, they can start the process. Uh, they're doing all, the states and counties are doing all kinds of things to make sure that this happens very quickly. Yeah, every, every, as you mentioned, every state, every city kind of drafting its plan on how it's going to do this vaccine rollout. You mentioned, though, you know, Operation Warp Speed. And, and while it has created, or, or, or we, we've seen at least two vaccines come out of that, potentially more, Doctor, though, there are questions about this process and the fact that it is being done so quickly. 
um, that mm -hmm. some people may not trust the vaccine. And we're seeing some former presidents saying, hey, we are going to try to instill that trust in the vaccine distribution. Absolutely. And, you know, to be very honest about it, this was just incredible speed at which the vaccine was developed. Now, people have to take into consideration one thing that manufacturing was started very early in the in the time frame uh, of the vaccine. It was a huge risk uh, that was taken, a financial risk and a scientific risk. And uh, fortunately, that has worked out. Uh, now, uh, President Obama, President Clinton, President Bush, they have said, listen, we will take the vaccine on camera so that people can see that we are taking it. And I think it's a, it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, thing for them to do because uh, we need uh, that for the nation to see. Uh, I can assure you that the science that has gone into this thing, everybody that has been working on it has been working on it so that they can come up with the best possible solution, best possible vaccine, and, and no corners were cut to develop the vaccine. And, and that is why, for example, you know, AstraZeneca, you know, even a small error in the data, you know, FDA said, well, you know, stop. We yeah. are going to take a look at it and, and, and go, go forward. You know, UK, by the way, uh, you know, uh, granted uh, emergency authorization used through their FDA uh, for the Pfizer vaccine, and, and they've already started vaccinating people over there. Uh, but uh, our FDA is a lot more stricter. It is the number one authority in the world, and uh, they make sure that all the T's are crossed and all the I's are dotted before anything goes out into the public because they carry that responsibility, uh, you know, and, and, and they value that responsibility uh, to the max. Yeah. And I think having, you know, uh, three former leaders of our country get vaccinated will go a long way in instilling that confidence that, that we really need in order to, to beat this pandemic. Before I let you go, though, doctor, there is an important note here, and that is this idea that once you are vaccinated, you, you'll have a, a vaccination card. It's similar to, to if, if, if you're a parent, you, you know, your, your child has an immunization card that allows them to enroll in school and take place in certain programs. Uh, do you see that as a realistic option here for people to get and, and carry an immunization card? So I think it can happen uh, because, uh, you know, for travel purposes, for uh, for work purposes and all that, I think it's going to be very important to, ha to, to, to make sure that people are vaccinated because you just don't want this disease to spread anymore. Uh, you know, unless and until uh, the, the, the entire population or at least 70 to 80 percent of the population is vaccinated, we cannot, you know, we, we cannot sit in peace. We, we have to continue this struggle and, and keep pushing as hard as possible uh, so that we can we can decrease the number of hospitalizations, number of deaths. I mean, if you imagine, I mean, th think about it. I mean, so far, you know, everybody was talking about that. Okay, uh, this this disease kills only one percent of the people, right? So if there are two hundred thousand people, hypothetically or actually actually hospitalized today, that means that two thousand people are going to die. Uh, our population is about you know depending upon what you look at, over 200, and, uh, sorry, 330 million people, correct? Uh, so if you think about, okay, 1% dying, that's over 3 million people dying. I mean, you can't deal with that. I mean, I just can't deal with that. I mean, it's just not possible. So we've got to make sure that we take care of things. In the last five years, if we accumulate all the numbers of, the total number of deaths due to influenza, we have exceeded that number with COVID right now. Wow, that is a sobering number, if you think about it. Well, Dr. Chotani, really appreciate it. I, I know that you'd like to remind people uh, to take those simple steps, wearing your mask, washing your hands, social distancing, a really important reminder. Absolutely, and, and everybody should follow that to the, t I mean, just follow it as a, as a religious thing or whatever you think, societal thing, whatever it is, you gotta follow those three principles because unless and until, Till you personally get the vaccine, you if when you get the vaccine, then 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 you don't have to worry about it. But till you get the vaccine, and for the general population, you know it will take time. So we still have about four months before or five months before it gets available to everybody. Uh, you know, apart from the priority list that we are looking at right now. So make sure that you are taking precautions so that you can save yourself save your family, save your community, save your parents and, and, you know, and grandparents. Please take care and, and make sure that you wear the mask, 
social distance and washing your hands. And, 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 and let's not have as much fun as we always do during the holiday season, which is a terrible thing to say, but let's live so that we can enjoy it next year. Thank All you. right, really appreciate it. Dr. Chotani, until next week, thank you again. Thank you so much.